Um, so following on from uh, yesterday about pushing the boundaries beyond orthotics, um, I'm going to speak about a case report, um, Christine. So next slide. Uh, Christine is 70. She had um, some nerve damage from an L45 laminectomy and decompression 10 years ago. Um, so her complication um, caused some right leg weakness and um, neuromotor and sensory damage, um, of which she's had progressive immobility. So at the beginning, she just had some mild foot drop and was coping quite well. And then over the sort of 10 years since, um, she's had this sort of progressive immobility. She was referred to me by her neurophysio, who um, basically noticed she was wearing orthotics and she'd found these very useful. And so she just has sent her to me because she needed um, her orthotics revising. Uh, next slide. So in terms of um, patient examination, she has some weakness in her quadriceps, her psoas. She has weakness in her tibialis anterior. As you can see from standing, she's sort of almost developed a sort of adult acquired flat foot. On her right side, calcaneal version, for foot abduction, the Victor drop. Um, she also has uh, excessive uh, knee hyperextension due to her quadriceps weakness. And um, she's unable to do her heel walk, which is the um, test for kind of foot drop. Um, so it's like the penguin walk of walking on your heels. Um, she's got some calf power and is able to do a single heel raise, although it is very weak. So that's a kind of presentation of her um, biomechanically. Next slide. So Christine was really active um, before she had these back problems. She played um, at quite an active tennis club. She used to go on walking holidays in the Alps and um, she was a very, very active lady. And unfortunately, because of her um, sort of progressive um, immobility, she's thrown herself into swimming um, and swims at a really high level. I think she swims like seven days a week. Um, and um, so obviously that's been a sport she's been able to do and also really good for her physical conditioning. But she is falling a lot um, and that's knocking her confidence. She lives in Kingston and she's finding it hard to go out in sort of Kingston where it's busy with shopping um, now because um, I just got a feeling that of her instability. Next slide. So this is a video of Christine walking um, barefoot. Um, with a foot drop, obviously, swing phase is, is, um, is difficult, and there's gait compensations for that. Um, she hip hitches, she circumflexes her right leg. Um, she also has a kind of right arm abduction. So these are all um, sort of balance strategies and strategies her body's using to keep her, from, uh, keep her moving forward. From a kind of foot leg, foot floor, um, uh, um, point of view, you can see she does go into kind of maximal pronation um, and um, because of the deficit in her, in her tibial, tibialis anterior, she kind of goes into sort of maximal late mid-stance pronation. Um, quite a slow cadence, short step length um, and, you know, quite a, a laboured gait. So I then, um, so this is her walking with orthotics, which um, I'd replace. I've been seeing her over a kind of sort of two-year period, so, um, but this is, this is her walking with the orthotics. And the video just there is obviously her walking barefoot, so you can compare those gait changes. And I think what's actually really interesting is that she has no foot-up aid here. Um, and actually, she's getting much better foot clearance um, and <coughs> less um, sort of hip hitch, less circumflexion in her leg faster cadence. Um, I think the thing to also remember with her is that she does have this deficit in her hip flexor and her quadriceps. It's not just the, the classic tip, you know, tib ant for foot drop. Um, she, you know, she's, she's always going to um, be weak in her kind of swing phase. Um, so she's also, you can see her foot position um, is, is better as well. So I made her a Ritchie brace, um, and a Ritchie brace is um, is basically a, a foot plate with a with a with some uprights, and it has a tamarack hinge, um, which basically spring loads and allows the um, foot to be pushed into sort of dorsiflexion um, during the swing phase. It also um, for for Christine plays a part in controlling her foot leg um, uh, frontal plane alignment as well, which is obviously um, what Ritchie braces are used for as well. And um, as you can see, there's better foot clearance. 
um, in her gait. You can see she is more upright. There's faster cadence, so we're just seeing sort of improved um, uh, gait patterns. So um, uh, the Richie brace, in terms of the description of what I did, um, is I uh, posted her to vertical with a six millimeter uh, medial skive, um, and then the and the tamarack hinge. And you know that's sort of how simple these prescriptions are for for um, um, for her Richie brace. Next slide. So Christine really wanted to kind of push the boundaries of, of um, and explore other options uh, for, for improving her gait. Um, so the neurophysio that she works with actually supplies FES, which is functional electronic stimula electrical stimulation. Um, basically, this is um, a device which, where electrical signals um, stimulate nerves and then, and then those um, uh, generate muscle contraction. So the thing that's important to remember is that there has to be existing activation required, which is the same with the Ritchie brace. So if there's kind of a, you know, a flaccid foot drop, then unfortunately none of these devices will work. Um, so it's really, again, it's, it's to assist. So you can see that the uh, equipment goes around the tibialis, uh, over the front of the shin, tibialis anterior. This um, uh, pad here fits inside the heel. And basically, when she heel contacts, the equipment works out when she's in her swing phase um, and then generates that muscle contraction to allow the foot um, to dorsiflex uh, through, the, through the swing phase. She also has FES for her um, quadricep and hip flexor, um, but that's just the um, photo of, of that. Next slide. So this is her walking with the FES and her orthotics. Um, the FES in this video is just on her tib ant. It's not the one on her hip flexor as well. And then we've got the video in the corner there just to compare of her walking with the Ritchie brace. So again, we're seeing um, you know, better foot clearance. Um, we're seeing less hip hitch. Um, we're seeing kind of more upright gait. And um, interestingly, from her point of view, she, she feels more stable with the Ritchie brace, with the Tamarack hinge. Um, possibly because you've also got this kind of foot, foot leg um, support of the Ritchie brace. Uh, but in terms of, um, you know, for her going out in the, more in the summer, then uh, and, and she, she'll kind of switch between all the different type of equipment. But as I said, she, she does feel a bit more secure in the, um, in the Ritchie brace. I think something I just forgot to say at the beginning, actually, just so you know, so she, uh, Christine doesn't have any pain, so that's not why she's, she's come to see me. She's, she's actually just, uh, this is all just functional deficit um, problem. Next. So, a um, lot going on on this slide. The top left-hand picture is her walking barefoot, and then this is with the um, Ritchie brace. And then this footage is of her walking with the Ritchie brace, with the FES um, on her tibialis anterior and on her um, hip flexor. As you can see, she's getting a longer stride length, so she's getting more kind of mechanical advantage with her, um, with her swing phase. Uh, her, her cadence is, is faster, her step length is a bit faster, and, um, but, you know... That, Unfortunately, this hasn't totally created a, a normal gait for her. And also, what's interesting from her point of view is that, is that you know, she, she ends up with quite... That's quite a lot of in, um, interference, and she does feel quite robotic when she's wearing um, all, all of this equipment. Um, so, next slide. So... Um, you know, this is all very well because we're looking at things very biomechanically here, but, you know, Christine has to, has to live with this. Um, for her to get her, all her FES set up on her hip, uh, for her hip flexor and her tib ant and get her Ritchie brace on um, is, is all quite a faff. It takes about sort of 10 or 15 minutes. So if she's going to just pop out to the, pop out to the shops, then, um, she, you know, she's not going to probably rig all, all this up. Also, you have to think of, um, particularly with the FES, it's very much a walking dynamic gait. Um, so if she's, say, standing around, then she has to switch the FES off. And I think that's where the Ritchie braces actually work really well because it's just, it's just there. And, and if, she's, if she's just moving around, then it's giving her that foot up. Um, 
she has to work really hard on her flexibility. So a sort of contraindication to FES and the Ritchie brace is that she ne you need to have ankle dorsiflexion. So uh, she has to work really hard with massage and stretching to be able to keep free up that motion and stop the contracture of the calf muscle. But also she has to work so hard on her core stability and her strengthening and she works with a personal trainer to really just try and keep as, as strong and as upright as she can. Her concerns as well are about her ageing decline, as we all are. <laughs> um, but, um, but, you know, as she gets older, in the last 10 years, she's got weaker and weaker. And I've seen this with quite a few of my foot drop patients, is that they do well sort of initially when they're younger, but as they get older, um, it just gets harder to maintain that level of, of strength or activation. Um, but hopefully with, with ever, I mean, you can pretty much say this patient is very motivated and she's doing everything she can um, to try and keep herself as, as mobile as she can. So, thank you. Super, thank you.